Considering that people Dionysus must win the competitive struggle, then Phoebus people each have an individual task that they must solve. Does this mean that there is no competition between the two and therefore they're not in each other's way? Do you mean that Phoebuses shouldn't be in each other's way? If you want to know whether Phoebus people are competitors to each other, colleagues, they definitely are competitors. Each Phoebus is a carrier of his own informational channel, and the task of each Phoebus is to assert his channel as the most important of them all. Phoebus generally live according to the rules of hierarchy. They do like it very much. Phoebus channel preferably work on the current of love, although they do not always get access to it. Love in a mystical sense, not in a human sense. And in a mystical sense, it is a force that connects everything together. You can connect all with everything when there is a presence of at least one common element in the connecting elements. And then this common element is taken and set as the primary one, and all other elements connect through this one common element. Meaning that this one thing is the main thing for all of us, therefore we are united. And so everything that connects Phoebus people ideologically also unifies them. This is how the Phoebus channels organize egregorial spaces and egregorial systems, for example by bringing one main thing into the nucleus and making everything else secondary. And so the competitive struggle between Phoebuses lies in the fact that each of them carries his own idea of what is most important. And the task of each Phoebus, an essential and major task, is not just to implement this main idea into reality, but first and foremost to find it within every consciousness, to assert this one most important thing with additional ideas that confirm this one main thing and not some other main thing of another Phoebus, as of don't listen to him, listen to me, he's talking about some other other main thing, utterly lewd, completely useless, but mine is truly the main one. And when he finds this main thing among all of the flock entrusted to his care, represented by Dionysus, he will take this main idea, connect it with one common thread, thereby gathering all Dionysus like grapes in a bunch. Here they all are, my little beauties. Each Phoebus carries his own idea and each one possesses the task of bringing this idea into reality, activating this idea and most importantly doing so within the maximum number of consciousnesses. And then connecting everyone together with one unique logical thread. And another Phoebus will do the same. This is why Phoebus are great competitors to each other. Dionysuses are fighting for resources, fighting for space, fighting for speed. They have a childish kind of competition, whereas the competition of Phoebuses is adult-like. Phoebus people don't joke around about this process, because they come here with a conscious task. Even if it is not mentally verbalized, their instinct tells them, if I won't do this now, if I don't achieve this, if I won't get this result, and if this person won't tell me the right thing, and the necessary words in the right time and the right place, that would mean that I have lost. And it is possible that the mind does not bring this out to the attention of the mental body, but a purely internal sense of this exists nonetheless. And all actions that Phoebes undertake as a rule are dictated precisely by this sense, the fear of losing. If I don't do this now, that's it. If I don't take this action now, that's it. I didn't make it. And they achieve their goals in very different ways and along very different paths. Dionysuses, in this regard, are of course playing around to a greater extent, because Dionysuses do everything for themselves and not in the name of ideas. They will take an idea, chew it up and spit it out. They will find sour elements in this bunch of grapes, and this whole structure will fall apart. That is why Dionysuses certainly are freer, more free to do as they please. They don't have any of these super ideas, they don't have any hypertasks, and generally they have the opportunity to send their hypertasks quite boldly to hell. They can take one task, then another, a third, fourth one, chew it up and spit it out, which makes Phoebus people extremely agitated. Can there be competition between Phoebuses and Dionysus at all? Only one kind of competition. Who will be the first to believe in an idea and who will be the first to interact with it? 
In this case, Dionysuses can generally appear as a sort of competitors to Phoebuses, because they can let a dozen of ideas pass through their consciousness, quickly changing one idea for another, and be, in terms of social success, ahead of Phoebuses, because they can be preoccupied with ten things at a time, while a Phoebus deals with one thing only, but does it well. Dionysuses deal with many things, but poorly. But one of these things will definitely stand out. This is why in this world Dionysuses are socially more successful than Phoebuses, but only socially. From an existential point of view, Phoebuses are more successful because they achieve their goal no matter what. And this inner intuitive feeling that now is the time to act, which Dionysuses lack, as for them every day is the time for doing something and every evening is the time to stop doing it as something else has turned up. Whereas Phoebuses possess this very sharp instinct, and you, Phoebuses, please remember that you should not miss it in any way, as you may lose everything and even the support of your primary idea channel. But this inner feeling will never let you give up and will drive you to start your task when it should be started and will make you finish it when it is time to be finished.